So welcome back. This is episode three of Functionally Delusional. I am Joe, and that is Gabriel from Rational Typology in Infamy. And uh, this episode, we're going to talk about what the INTJ should, and maybe at the end, we'll talk about shouldn't consume. Um, you know, I hope the perspective of two different INTJs, two different INTJs in the Rational Typology system, um, maybe can offer offer some useful guidance for those who might be seeking direction or um, just what they think, you know, some someone in their 30s would recommend as an INTJ to consume that's good and bad. So, um, Gabriel, do you want to, do you have any thoughts on that just high level? Because I, I kind of have a, I have a lot on this topic. Uh, yeah, sure. I've been thinking about this quite a lot. Um, so, the first thing well, maybe not the first, but something that's the first in importance of quality hierarchy would be learning what logic is, um, like learning how to think with that unconsciously, um, and then seeing things through that lens, providing you want to make systems run how things operate. Okay, so when you say that, that sounds, that, is there a, what mediums can you use to find that, find how to think logically? Oh, it doesn't specifically doesn't specifically matter, but okay. like there's, there'd be a bunch of books on mm -hmm. how, to, how to, like what logic is. Um, like I'm I'm sure there's things on YouTube. Mm -hmm. They don't have to be. Um, yeah, there have to be. Do you have yeah. Arist like Aristotelian or Aristotle logic? <laughs> I'm not sure the difference. Okay, me neither. <laughs> I'm just trying to sound smart. <laughs> so is it like the TI logic of like? deductive if this then that type reasoning so um i think probably the uh the easiest way to talk about what logic is it is it's the absence of uh lying to yourself inadvertently or or, or, or deliberately yeah wow is that your definition because i like it um i've heard other other people use it so uh, like multiple people have got to similar conclusions what does it mean in the sense of not lying to yourself deliberately? Like you're you're purposely missing, like you're well, purposely uh, not using information to make it a better point. It's not deliberate, I don't think. So, okay. like, like, uh, so, for example, um, there's a, there's a bunch of kind of human processes that are technically inaccurate but are useful for survival. Um, <laughs> for like, uh, for for example, there's an implicit bias that most people have, where they perceive, but where they perceive tall people to be more accurate, which is obviously very silly, but it slips into people's unconscious processing regardless. So, it would be something like catching yourself out on that. Like, no way, that doesn't make sense. But look, pay attention to what the argument is. Yeah. Or like you're saying, it's pretty people. Even worse. Yeah. Right, so that would be a, another example. So, um, like it's called the halo effect. So, people are more likely to associate positive things with positive elements they see in people. Uh, okay, so that okay, so that would be like a that would take a while to kind of breathe that out of yourself. Yeah. Okay. But it, but it's good to do. Um, so so I would recommend learning what logic is and then. And then when you're thinking about how to resolve things, use that. And then in combination with finding someone that really pisses you off and you don't really know why, and then <laughs> watching or, or like consuming, like, like you could read it or watch it, consuming enough of their content to be able to logically break down why it's wrong. Ooh, and, okay. And that's, that's the first step of how to be a, a good, a good systems analyzer. I like that. Okay. So that would be. I think that was where YouTube would be a good place to like, I know that you've, you've almost kind of, you actually do this as part of your analysis is to watch the worst people. Yeah. I, I, I seek out the most silly thought processes because, uh, well, I find it funny, um, but it's as good from the perspective of knowing how not to operate because like most of good thinking is not bad, is, is avoiding bad thinking. Okay. <laughs> That's so simply put, but like very, very complex. So you're starting off with understanding logic, what it is, and then how to w ways to work, work with it and how to spot bad thinking, unconscious bias in yourself. Okay. I kind of took a different approach. I think this is just a type 
type different approach, which is uh, I kind of broke down like the mediums and then within those mediums, what I think would be useful. So like, uh, I don't know how much of a reader you are, but I really like books. You know, in 2020, I made a goal to read a hundred books and I discovered that uh, mainstream, I think the INTJ mainstream books will, you will find lacking in depth. I mean, it's sort of this mode of like, if everyone's read it, the common denominator has read it, it's not going to provide a lot of use. You should have a dense book, a dense philosophical book where you can only read like five to 10 pages at a time and you got to put it down to really challenge you. So when it comes to, so when you say that, I think of things like Twilight. Is that right. what you're referencing? Yes. Like lowest common denominator. Right? Yes. Yeah. So, because I read Twilight, but specifically from the perspective of wanting to learn, like, fantasy heuristics around what makes people, like, like badly like badly written book from a technical perspective. Badly written book from a technical perspective? Yeah, like, the story doesn't make a lot of sense, technically. Like, the cause and effect is a bit iffy. So I was like, because I know that's true, but also why do people like it? So I was trying to figure out. I was trying. To, I was trying to figure out why people liked it, and um, my conclusion was is, is, is it is that it appeals to like unconscious fantasies that like uh, women have more than men. I think I think there is some indulgence, and in like the other thing I was saying about I'm going to say about the books is that you should always have like something on the opposite of like the real dense philosophy, which is like I read a lot of really basic horror and crime stuff just to kind of break out of the monotony of it but always the characters are seemingly very dark detectives like it's like that neo-noir type so i still think that fits in with a motif but i wouldn't get too caught up in the whole like ivory tower of like nietzsche and schopenhauer and just trying to be as like philosophical as possible because then you just become really pretentious oh i, I can't stand nietzsche <laughs> one of those people that fundamentally irritate me <laughs> what about nietzsche i've read like all this stuff so i'm interested to hear from what I from what I have read, it seems like he makes overarching patterns, and then he connects the patterns. But it's not as as specific as it should be to have its proper exponential value. So it kind of seems like it's a it's like it's a spider's web of jelly. <laughs> okay, <laughs> you're right. He does do that. Like I think he takes the most limited amount of information, just says all this or that. Like he, he talks about Germany. Like, all Germans are this way now. Yeah. It's like that's without really a lot of logic or a lot of like good examples. Yeah, that's like, that's part. He's part of like the hermit INTJ that like. I, I think that's a misuse of NI. Totally. Like, like personally. Yeah, I think so too. He's very arrogant too. It's so great. It's like I he could not have been alive today. Could not have written in 2021. There's just no way he'd be banned instantly. But that dives into the next thing with books. Is I like to read like historically status quo challenging books or books that are banned just to see like what is the idea that's there that would be so dangerous and i'm like i seek that stuff out yeah i i, I also like to do that yeah okay I, I once i once uh i once uh got an illegal book from from someone around how to do a necromancy <laughs> okay for some reason that was illegal and it, should, it was just a very silly book on like how to play with bones but uh, I found it really kind of amusing that, like, first of all, just the concepts were amusing because they were so silly, but then also, um, simultaneously, that people thought this was worthy of sense. Of that, do you think that, do you need any personal development stuff, like diet or, like, how to run your business better or task task stuff, like how to prioritize your, get your shit together? I read a lot of that. Okay, so... When it comes to something that's got a specific, like, measurable outcome, like, for example, diet, because there's a lot of just hard data on what that's likely to do to you. Mm -hmm. Like, like things like calories, if I want to lose weight, eat less calories. Sure. If I want to get strong, um, like, learn about how other people have done that, then I'm likely to get uh, the results that are positive, as opposed to, like, Derping around in the gym and trying to figure it out myself. It's just, it's just, it's just less efficient doing that. Okay. So yeah, I'd say that's definitely worth it. Um, providing it's a, like providing you know what you're measuring. I guess. I was thinking of, of stuff where it's like, uh, where it's like be a better person. You know, like how? What does that mean? Yeah. 
a better I am a person? How can I be a better version of what myself, I guess? Because it's not as, as too vague. It means too much. It's catchy, though. There's like there's a phrase I see all the time, like 1% better every day. Like, that's great. That sounds awesome. Like, how could you be 1% better? But then what? Yeah. So after 100 days, you should be 100% better. <laughs> but of what, I wonder? <laughs> Okay, that's perfect. So it should be like the hundred. That's that could be like a book title: hundred days to hundred percent better, or something like that. You know? Yeah. But, but, but that's where type comes in. Well, at what? It's like how do you know you're improving? It's like get down to the unfortunate details of existence. Okay. Okay. I wonder if an INT that would be a good book for INTJ to write. Um, I mean, if if they were familiar with the subject, yeah. <laughs> Whatever it was. Okay. Um, it's okay. So I did. So books is one one thing I want to talk about. Mo I only had like one thing on movies. Like I'm not like we should movies today are just reboots. I don't think there's like much value in things that have come out today because it's like the creativity's gone. And it's like what can we create from <laughs> yeah. that's already been popular? But like I like Christopher Nolan. Obviously he's an INTJ. I like the nonlinear stuff. Um, dark. That's a show called Dark on Netflix. That's like very Nietzsche and it's all like NI based and what's reality, what's perception, things like that. Um, I think something like Inception was a great INTJ movie. Just challenging what you believe is real. Okay. Um, I, I don't watch. There? I, I, I hardly ever watch films. So. Okay. <laughs> Um, that, the reason I don't watch them is because I, I kind of categorize elements of how things operate and then they annoy me after like half an hour. Why like, that doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense. That doesn't make sense. And it's kind of like a, like a, like an emotionally distressing, um, thing to engage in. So I just don't do it. You, um, okay. You see, there, I have another INTJ friend who's exactly that way. He basically says that. I'll, I'll watch any movie as long as the premise is based in logic, even if it's sci-fi. Yeah, yeah, that's what that's kind of how I am. So like uh, time travel, uh, he can't watch because he's like, they're, or he could watch it, but it has to be like, has to make sense how they're doing it. Yeah, yeah. So that, that's what I'm like. Um, it's not conscious either. I, I I can't block it out properly. It's not like I'm I'm not trying to be annoying. Like um, like I just why don't watch it by myself either. I feel like it'd be very hard for you then, with given this criteria you've set forth, that to have like a thoroughly enjoyable movie experience. I, I, there was this one um, Japanese show I watched that I liked when I was when I was pretty young. It was called like Princess Mononoke, okay. and I like that. That's the, that's the thing I like. Um, uh, I'm pretty sure I like Star. I'm pretty sure I like the old Star Trek as well. Okay, I haven't. Really watched it for ages, but I uh, I'm pretty sure I like that because it asks kind of like interesting moral questions. Okay, I feel like you, for your own sake, should not go back and watch it because I guarantee you'll find a hole. I mean, yeah, I, I <laughs> maybe yeah, you would. Probably. Like, like just yeah. do yourself a favor. Like, it's the whole thing. Like, never meet your heroes. Like, don't go back and ruin it. Just keep the fantasy alive that it was all good and it's a perfect show. Now uh youtube i have a lot of thoughts on youtube i mean i actually found myself watching a lot of dumb stuff on youtube a lot of compilations of like people falling down and getting hurt fail videos for no reason it's like very indulgent just kind of laughing at the humans um but i do watch others in the mbti field i i do find that other types especially like in mbti but INTJs out there, whatever field you're in, watch other people's opinions of or techniques because I've gotten so much insight from opposite types telling, describing the functions. Oh, I'm going to take that. Like, I would never have thought about it that way, but I need it. It's just more data points. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I think it's good to consume just like various, um, various categories i guess like even ones you disagree with maybe especially if you disagree with them like maybe maybe that's more important um would you say others of your type like other intjs out there or like opposite types or just general anyone that you disagree with probably probably if it's the same type as you that's probably more important to figure out why you're disagreeing with them because either you're wrong or they're wrong um, <laughs> 
But if 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 you're wrong, then you should know about it, and you probably can figure out why easier if it's the same type as you. Um, if it's, if it's a different type, it could just be like a miscommunication, even of like just using words in slightly different ways. So it's so it's, it's less less significant, probably. There was this advice that I um that I perceived an INTJ giving, where uh, she thought that you should um like take the perspective of people and then like with with their emotions and then act as if that was their emotions which isn't very appropriate to do if you're an intj because you're gonna just kind of be straw manning people but in an archetypal way which is probably gonna piss people off and you're gonna be wrong which is two bad things <laughs> okay so was it was the advice like personality mirroring or not um I think it was advice on how you should operate. Okay. Like, oh, okay. Okay. Hmm. So, like, I might give advice to INTJs where um, I think they should learn to play out multiple patterns at the same time. Because if you can do that, then you can learn models faster. And it's a skill that INTJs can learn. Probably, probably, probably like primary NI users can do that because it's their first thing. But for the, anyone else, they just um, can't. I think one thing that INTJs definitely need to consume is is nature and physical activity. Um, like fusing S S E N I, if you believe in that. Um, like physical yet spiritual. So like yoga, I think is good. I think weightlifting is really good. I think like getting in touch with your body. Maybe dancing is, re is a really good thing for an INTJ. Um, what do you think about that? I think weightlifting is good because. <laughs> It makes people think you're more right for dumb heuristic reasons, and that is useful from a technical perspective. <laughs> um, it goes back to the pretty, also, pretty and tall people thing, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. It's also healthy. Well, it's a good combination of like a little bit of like an exploit, but a little bit of just it's a healthy thing. You're right. More in shape people, yeah. prettier people, taller people. If you have all of that, as an and you happen to be an INTJ, then like you'll get your way, or you'll be able to convince people. As it comes to spiritual things, um, I don't know what that means properly. <laughs> so, like, I'm not like challenging you on that. That's that's not on that that's a bad thing, or I don't know because I don't know what that means. Um, I I do I do believe in some things that will be considered spiritual, um, like. Such as I think that there is a, that there is existence after like you physically die. Yeah. Like, I do think that is a thing. Um, I, I'm not I'm not tying that to any religion specifically. Um, and the reason I think that is because of my experiences, which are entirely subjective, and I cannot prove them. So it's that's not something I'd even try to argue about. Right. But, okay. But it, it is my experience. Okay. Um. I have found, and this is probably not a very hot take, but I think for some people that are maybe newer to MBTI or they just found out they're an INTJ, like um, when I say nature, I don't mean just go for a walk because that makes it easier for you to accidentally slip back into NI and actually not focus on the things that are around you. But I have felt like being in a very SE activity that allows you no chance to um, like get lost in your own head can actually provide the most amount of insight that's why I like the shower thoughts literally i have the best thoughts there like not allowing yourself to if you if you think too hard on a problem you won't figure it out but if you give yourself a little bit of time like put that problem away do something else all of a sudden your brain figures it out yeah i i, I have noticed that it's like when it comes to a tick like a difficult uh, thing to, to comprehend and then you're doing something that seems random and you're like oh i understand it now um, <laughs> I don't really know why that is, but like maybe switching between subjects or something, if like focusing different things or like as you said, going for a walk, like that that's definitely useful. Or weightlifting because you're not gonna be really focused on the conceptual things if you're under like physical stress. At least you're less likely to be. Exactly. So so, yeah. so, so running, I wouldn't recommend because I mean you can get in a flow state while running if you get in a perfect pace. And then you can start thinking about stuff again. And I feel like that, that's not the way to problem solve. So for, I think for the, especially for the INTJ, like going on a walk is less of a, doesn't it doesn't clear my mind. 
physical stress or doing something like, I don't know, washing the dishes where it's very tactile, that's when the, that's when the brain gets in. That's when the, that unconscious pattern in the background, that app refresh is going and you're like, oh, there it is. Um, one thing I added right before this that I thought I was like so stupid to not, like this is one of my, for INTJ's advice to not do, or if you do, it has to be like a, given a time limit or a time block or a, a very specific amount you're going to do it, which is the news, watching the news, reading the news, consuming news. Um, I feel like it causes a lot of anger because you're constantly saying like, here's what you need to do. How is no one not seeing this? Like, it's so obvious. Mm -hmm. You can't TE anything with the news. You can't control it. You can't physically wield any sort of way to, to fix it. Um, and you're constantly upset that no one's doing what you should do. So I think that can turn you into like a super cynical negative person, um, which is not fun to be around at parties. You end up being like a party pooper. Yeah, that's true. That's like you watch the news, you're like, that's a fucking straw man. Why do you not pick up on that as a straw man? Just learn what words mean. And then it's, like, it's like, we're going to do this. You're like, but that doesn't, like, the, the, the results of that are not even what you want properly because of these reasons. And it gets you into kind of like an emotional frenzy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. Like, like me, so, yeah, unless you're like, uh, like maybe maybe the advice is only watch the news if you want to respond to it in some kind of practical way. So maybe make a video talking about how it's dumb. Maybe that's maybe that'd be useful for people. <laughs> like like most people aren't primary NI users, so they're gonna be less good with like most people don't have uh, patterns as their first position. So, like, they might not know, um, f like, pointing out the logical inconsistencies between, like, the way they're communicating what they want to happen. Mm -hmm. that, that, might be, that might be useful. Um, so, I, I, I would agree with you, but with the addendum, unless you want to respond to it in a T way. Okay. And yeah. I think, okay, so that, that's a really good caveat, because that's probably the only way that you could justify consuming that much news. Like, having like a Twitter feed if you're on Twitter or having uh, subscriptions on YouTube where you're watching the news for specific reasons that you can TE in a healthy manner. I think maybe for MBTI, it'd be like, oh, here's an example in the news that's relevant of a of a bad TE user or a bad NE user or something like that where you can combine the two, but you're not getting into like the political stress because you, you just can't win as an INTJ. Well, this is episode three of functionally delusional uh, this was about how the intjs what they should consume or what should not consume thanks gabriel talk to you guys soon yeah